Hi there, my name's Ben Magcalf, and you're watching An Introduction to the Art of Mixing, filmed at Point Blank Music College in London. So what do we mean when we talk about the mix? Well, the mixing process or the mixing stage is what the terminology implies. It's the, the blending of sounds in your piece uh, when you, you put all the, the separate instruments in their own sort of frequency area. And you know, it's the consequent effect that this has on, on the piece as a whole. It's when you get to balance the individual sounds sort of tonally and in terms of their volume with EQ and other processes like compression. As with most things, there are different approaches. For example, some people prefer to mix as they write, uh, so getting each sound as close to perfection uh, as, as they can before moving on to the next. Other people like to just, well, other people feel this impedes their, their creative process uh, and prefer to just get it all laid down and written and then mix it at the end or even get someone else to mix it for them, which is quite commonplace. <laughs> A good mix starts with good sounds having already been recorded, as we did, as we talked about when we, we discussed recording audio. You know, you can't make a poor, poorly recorded sound, you know, like a vocal in a room, a boomy room with loads of background noise. It's very difficult, if not, if not impossible, to make that sound good with processing and effects uh, after the fact. So always try and get the highest quality of sound before you even get to mixing at the recording stage. Attempting to fix things in the mix is an uphill struggle and rarely entirely successful, so avoid doing that. Cool, so what we're gonna do today, I'll play you a track that I've made uh, off my album and we're gonna mix that sort of together with suggestions from you guys. It's called Mistakes. We'll play for it first to, to, so you guys get an idea of how it's supposed to sound and then we'll mix it from the ground up. So here it is. Is the sun, where have you been? Show me what I should have seen. Blind my eyes, blinding me, blinding me until I'm clean. Until I'm clean. Obviously what I've done here, you'll notice that they're all actually audio stems and this is common practice when you're mixing a track down, especially if you're getting someone else to mix it for you, is rather than have all the actual instruments and um, you know, it, MIDI parts and stuff on there with all the processors on, once you're reasonably happy with, well, you know, reasonably happy with how it sounds anyway, you bounce off it, each individual stem as audio, as you notice there's no processors on any of these. Um, that gives the person who's mixing it uh, the opportunity to add their own processes. Pretty much always start with the drums first, and that applies not just to dance music, really. Anyone who's in a band or has been in a band and recorded a demo, you'll notice that the drummer goes and sits down and records his bits first, because it is, it's the backbone of the track, and it is kind of the thing that you base the rest of it. It's the reference point, you know, it's like the spine of the track. I mean, now that's done, I'm happy with my drums. Probably the next main element would be what? Any suggestions? Anyone? Thanks. Yeah, I'd say so. Although that sounds quite nice, it's probably a bit much, I'd say.
Remember, we're going to be having the mid-range sort of voices in there as well. I'd say that was about right. As a general rule, not everyone would do it this way, but I tend to do the vocal last at the ends of when everything else is in place because it kind of needs its own. It needs to be its own reference point. You need everything else in the track in place before you start thinking about a vocal. So let's have a look at this guitar quickly. Another reason you can consider that important is because it's happening quite regularly. It's happening on the snare, and if you get it wrong. Fight the snare and sound horrible, yeah? So that's that, and I think we're probably ready now to do the vocal coming in as it is here. So we'll play it back from here. about that. What's wrong with that? Too quiet. Too quiet. How about that? Bit yeah? I'd say as well. Basically, when you one trick I always have or always employ is if you think your vocals are loud enough turn it up by another dB or so, just to be sure. Because if people can't, it's the most, it is the, the main hook of the track. It's got what, the difference between a track with vocals in and a track without is that, you know, a, a wider range, or a larger number of people are gonna respond to anything that has vocals in it because it's just such a kind of fundamental form of communication. Something else about the vocal, the vocal itself, if I play it back on its own, certain bits of it sound a little bit harsh. Is the sun, where have you been? Show me what I should have seen. Burn my eyes, blinding me. Yeah, anyone? Yeah, this chef. Yeah, exactly. So what we're gonna quickly do is just sort that out. Listen to what's really peak, picking up when the, the shoes happen. What I should have seen. Show me what I should have seen. Here, see? Show me what I should have seen. I mean, to an extent Show here, but here as well. Show me what so, I we'll just quickly push that to 10,000. Bring that down. Now we're just going to listen through. I'm 